Thank you for joining me. Uh, good to see you again and welcome to IMEX uh, another year. Um, can you give me any particular updates on what's happening in DC at the moment? Anything uh, happening that we should know about? Yeah, absolutely. Happy to see you as well, Ian. Uh, good to always talk about uh, international travel, which is a good segue into what's happening in Washington. We're very fortunate uh, that we're seeing, like several cities, a uptick in travel since the pandemic, which is really good for us. Um, with that, we're seeing a huge economic boom tied to our industry uh, in terms of uh, visitation, in terms of revenue being generated by the industry. And that's really leading to a lot of new development in Washington, including the new Silver Line that runs from Dulles Airport to downtown Washington, DC. So travelers coming in um, can easily take the Silver Line into the city without paying a lot of money, uh, as well as a lot of new development in Washington along our river, a new uh, a baseball stadium that was uh, opened not long ago, a new soccer stadium, and just some great things that are tied to promoting DC off of the National Mall in the city. Classic. And, and how's the connectivity at the moment? Are you seeing a lot more airlines coming in as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things that I'm really looking forward to is at Union Station, which is really the easiest way, especially from long haul travelers that might be looking at coming to Washington or flying into New York and including other destinations. Union Station is about to undergo a massive renovation and expansion, similar to what uh, New York has done with Monaghan Hall, which is really good. And the other key thing for us is that as we work closely with our airport authority, uh, we're seeing more and more uh, information or opportunities for nonstop flights, some that are returning since the pandemic and some new routes that are coming online. A lot more international coming in as well? Especially international, that's the key thing for us. How do we get those nonstop international flights into Dallas? So we're really excited about not only the opportunity for long haul flights coming into Dallas, but also some of the new planes that are flying, especially with domestic carriers. And are you seeing a particular trend in the type of events that are coming into DC as well? Are there particular economic sectors that are stronger than others? Well, the key thing for us is that we've always done well with the meetings market, so we're seeing a strong uptick in meetings coming back to the city, but we're also preparing for some global events like World Pride, which we'll be hosting in 2025. Uh, there is a lot of momentum as the global community will come together and recognize the LGBTQ plus community. And let's just face it, World Pride is for all communities now. So we're excited about that. We're excited about uh, the 2026 250th anniversary of America in 2026. Um, we're not hosting a World Cup, but because there are so many opportunities with the global community coming into the US, we're also preparing to engage those that are coming in to go to other cities that want to also make Washington a part of their itinerary. So we're excited about con conventions coming back online, the uptick in leisure travel, as well as some of those global events in which we'll be hosting. So to have an event like that, obviously DC is seen as a very diverse and inclusive city? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, as a destination, we realize that in the US there are a lot of great destinations that Aussies and Kiwis can, can go to. For us, how do we dispel the, the image of politics coming into Washington, taking a picture in front of the White House, going to one museum, uh, and get folks to understand, one, there are 100 free things to see and do in Washington. There are over 25 free museums. Um, it's easy to walk around, two rivers, great restaurants, nightlife theater. So these events give us a chance to really showcase other components of our city that may not be as well known. Speaking of White House, I mean, elections are coming up fairly soon. Does it have any particular impact on DC itself? <sighs> Politics. <laughs> right now, no. Um, what happens is that in November after the election is when you start seeing more activity in Washington, D.C. as the president-elect is preparing for the inauguration. Of course, the current president was robbed of an inauguration in 2021 because of COVID. So we're really excited about actually seeing the economic impact of the inauguration coming back to the city and the momentum tied to it. Uh, we steer clear of the actual politics itself, but we do focus on the momentum tied to what's happening in the city during that time. And being here at a show like IMEX, what does that mean for the city in terms of 
you'll, you'll be, what are you looking to get out of the show itself? Yeah, IMAX is extremely important to us as we have been really investing in the international mice market for over 15 plus years um, to be able to showcase what we're doing with sustainability. The U.S., we talk the talk, but we don't necessarily, we're not the world leaders in sustainability. We're one of the uh, first uh, major destination marketing organizations in the U.S. to have a position that solely focuses on sustainability. So to talk about that here is big for us in terms of the opportunity to interface with those that bring meetings um, to North America. Uh, and then, of course, showcase some of the other things, some of the new product that's opening in Washington and ways in which folks can enjoy our destination for their meetings. Fantastic. Well, th Elliot, thank you so much. Thank you for giving us a quick update on what's happening in D.C. and uh, wish you a good show. Absolutely my pleasure. Good to see you.